name is Tiffany. We're starting the sacral chakra video. We'll do a little bit of information on the chakra and then we'll move into a practice. Thank you for patiently waiting for this video. Okay, the sacral chakra and Sanskrit is called Swadhastana, which I may be saying that wrong, but it's meaning it means one's own being. The symbol of the sacral chakra is this orange six petal lotus. The orange is represents joy, enthusiasm, creativity, and the six petals represent the personalities that we should overcome for our spirituality path, for our spiritual path. So those six personalities are anger, hatred, cruelty, pride, jealousy, and desire. Uh, it resonates with the element of water. <clears throat> it's also responsible for flow, flexibility, fun, passion, creativity, and sensual while connecting with your emotions. It's located in the lower belly, under the navel, <clears throat> and it's in the inner pelvis. It's activated between the ages of eight and 14 years old. And physically it's associated with your reproductive glands. <clears throat> For an unbalanced sacral chakra, you may notice or have unbalanced emotions. You could feel sadness, loneliness, unmotivated, low self-esteem, decreased sex drive, or dependency issues. It can also, well that's emotional unbalanced. For physical unbalanced, you may, uh, it may represent itself as infertility, uh, impotence, and <clears throat> menstrual issues. To help balance this chakra out, uh, foods is one thing. Basically, all of them are like foods, what you eat, what you intake, what you listen to. Uh, the foods that will help balance out your sacral chakra is orange foods. It's, it's associated with the color orange. Sweating. Um, oranges, peaches butternut squash, you know, you can kind of find this orange. Also, um, anything that has, it's high in omega-3s, salmon, um, sorts of fish, there's even like pills or vitamins for it. Also, since, associate, since it's associated with the element water, you can connect with water, you can go to the beach, you can take a nice healing bath, maybe put some healing herbs in there. Um, also, another way to balance it is meditation. Uh, I, there, again, on YouTube, there's uh, vibrational bi beats that connect with your sacral chakra. It has the same vibration. Uh, also, chants will help with that. And hip openers, movement, always movement. The crystals that will help with this are citrine, Tiger's eye, amber, which have an orange type crystal will help with that. And your essential oils that will help to balance out your sacral chakra are orange, clary, clary sage, sandalwood, and patchouli are a few. There may be more. Um, again, all this information is listed online. There's many books about the chakras. When you start to do chakra work, I know when I did, I, I felt a difference. So um, that, that again in itself, your internal being letting you know that, you know, this is working or this isn't working and it's different for everyone. So just keep that in mind and also keep patience in mind. If you practice this or like, because on my, on my Facebook page, I'll post different mantras for the sacral chakra 
or I'll post uh, mudras for the sacral chakra. Uh, my Facebook page is Yoga with Titi. So you can always kind of stay with the mantras throughout the week or month. I know usually when I work with my chakras, I'll try and do it at least a month because it's not going to happen within a day or two. You have to be patient and constant with it. And if it becomes a chore, don't force yourself to do it. It has, it's all in your intention. So it's all in how you feel about it. You know, if you're sitting there watching TV and you're like, hmm, like your intuition is like, well, maybe I should meditate now or Maybe I should drink, you know, some tea with some certain herbs in it or just sit with the mudra of that chakra or whatever you kind of need or feel your intuition will let you know when you're ready or when you, you're going to do it or feel like doing it. But if you're like, oh, you know, it's time to meditate, let me go like that. Don't just patiently wait until you're ready to do it. So this is our sacral chakra information. Um, we're going to go ahead and move into the practice. We will go through some hip openers. Remember, keep in mind, modification or decreased range of motion will help to modify the poses. So we're going to go ahead and start on our spines in a supine position. Now you can start to straighten your legs. If that's not comfortable, you can start to bend the knees, which will release some pressure in the lower part of your spine. <clears throat> you wanna draw your palms up to shine up. Shoulder blades are grounded and under the heart center. Start to draw awareness towards your breath. Relax the face, relax the jaw as you start to extend the inhales and exhales. Try to keep the breath balanced at the exhales longer. This will help to engage that parasympathetic nervous system and helps to find that rest and digest or calmness in the body. Once you have awareness towards the breath, do you have that nice long yogi breath? Balance your exhales longer. Start to slowly draw your knees into your chest. Now you can go at the same time or one at a time. You can start to bring your hands on your shins, maybe walking side to side for a little spine massage here. You want to make sure that we have some length in the back of our neck. So I noticed I was going like this. So I have to slightly draw my chin towards my chest to find that length in the back of the neck. Just finding a little movement here. When you're ready, we're going to start to transition into a happy baby pose. So you're going to start to draw the knees towards the armpits. So they're opening up, you're finding these open hips here, and then you can hold on either to the back of your thighs, you can hold on to your calves or your ankles, you can hold on to the outsides of your feet, or your big toes with your peace fingers. Start to draw your tailbone down. So some of us may be up, just energetically drawing that tailbone towards the mat to flatten the back or to allow the spine to ground into the mat. Once you're here, you can rock side to side. This is our happy baby pose. And think about that. Babies tend to do this all the time. So maybe think about the past when you were a baby probably don't remember because I don't, but I mean, some of you may remember. Maybe there's that certain memory that's embedded within your subconscious. Still keeping that long, long nice yogi breath. We're gonna go into a half happy baby pose as you slowly start to come back to center. 
Start to find length in that left leg. Now again, if this is not comfortable, bend the knee. Our half happy baby pose. You may notice that the leg may extend a bit more towards the mat. You wanna to try to point your heel on the left leg, ground the calf, make sure the hip's nice and grounded. Again, if this is too much, decrease the range of motion, but just energetically drawing that thigh or calf towards the mat. Once you're here, we're gonna to start to bring the left hand onto the outside of the right leg. And then you're gonna bring your right hand out and start to bring the knee or the leg over the body coming into a nice supine twist. Make sure that the right shoulder blade is grounded. If you'd like a twist in the neck, you can take your gaze towards the right hand. On your next inhale, we'll gently bring the gaze to center. Gently start to untwist. So you can use the right hand if you need to, to slowly untwist, coming back into your happy baby pose. Once you're here, take a nice cleansing breath as you draw the core towards the mat, the navel, the sacral chakra, really grounding here. And then when you're ready, start to straighten out that right leg or bend the knee. Try to mimic the way you did the opposite side to keep the body nice and balanced. When you make all those internal adjustments, then you can start to go for your twist. Nice pop there. Oh, that felt good. On your next inhale, you're going to gently start to bring everything back to center. As you exhale, happy baby pose. Really try to draw that tailbone down, chin slightly towards the heart center. When you're ready, start to bring the soles of your feet together and then release the feet down towards the mat the blades of your feet for a nice bound angle pose. Now for less intense, the heels are further away from the body. More intense, they're closer to you. Maybe start to visualize the beach, the waves as the water flows. Keeping in mind that the waves are part of the ocean. I believe it was Alan Watts that said, the ocean is wavy and the universe is peopley. So we're all one with the universe, but we're not separate, we're just people, just like waves is not different from the ocean. Two more breaths. Really starting to draw the external part of the thighs towards the mat. Release any tension that you have here. And then when you're ready, you can start to slowly make it into a nice tabletop position. I did want to have orange on for the sacral chakra, but I didn't have anything orange. So as you move through your practice, visualize the color orange. Maybe visualize orange foods. I do have my citrine here though, citrine crystals. So with your tabletop, you want nice wide fingers, bringing some of the weight into the fingertips, the knuckles, the ball of the hand and the palm. You want your wrist underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. Press the tops of the feet into the mat and start to roll through cow cats. 
So you're inhaling into a cow. Exhaling cat. You want to start each movement with your pelvis and end with your head. Try to feel the spine as it's moving and finding that flow, right? Our sacral chakra is flow and water. So allow the energy to flow through the spine for two more. One. Two. Start to inhale to your normal tabletop. Bring your palms of palm print forward. Curl onto your toes. Lift your hips for a nice down dog. So you can start to pedal your feet. You can wag your tail. Oh, whatever you need here. Make sure the knees aren't locked. Micro bend or big bend. Energetically draw the heels towards the mat. Shoulder blades draw down the back. You want to externally rotate them out so they're not drawn towards the ears. Draw the tailbone towards the sky as the inner back of your thighs are drawn away from you. One more breath. On your next inhale, you're going to bring the right foot forward. We're going to come into a crescent lunge. Put on my hands at heart center. Start to make those subtle adjustments here. Make sure the belly's not poking out. A nice bend in the knee. Make sure the knee's not caving over the ankle. Two more breaths. Make sure those shoulders are away from the ears. Start to slowly bring the palms down. Down dog. This time we'll bring the left foot forward, coming into our crescent on its opposite side. Again, make those internal adjustments. Always start with the foundation. So notice how the feet are. Move through the legs, pelvis, torso, shoulders and arms, neck. One more breath. When you're ready, we're going to start to turn that back foot. Start to turn lengthwise on your mat. We're going to go into a goddess pose, which is another big hip opener. So I believe in our root chakra video, we did our wide legged forward fold. That one, our feet were nice and parallel with the edges of our mat. Not with goddess. With goddess, you want the toes drawn slightly out. Think of that tailbone really drawn and lengthening towards the mat. You can have your hands on your hips. Start to really extend out of the hips though. And then when you're ready with your exhale, so you still want to keep that awareness towards the breath as it flows through the body, as it flows through the spine. When you're ready, with your exhale, start to find a nice bend. Now, you want to make sure the knees aren't caving. You want to make sure you're not like this. If you are, widen the legs more. Start to find that bend. You also don't want the knees caving in. You want them drawn out, really open in the hips here. Pressing into the feet, really bringing that strength into your foundation. Make sure the butt's not poking back. You want to really draw the tailbone towards the mat. I'm already feeling this in my legs. If you're not, and you have your foundation here in your body, or in your foundation, I mean in your lower body, then you can energetically make those move, those internal movements. So you can start to gently squeeze the inner thighs together. Really fat, feel that internal sensation. Now you can stay here, or if you like, 
with your right shoulder, you can start to slowly bring it towards the left knee. And gently inhale back to center and go towards the opposite side. Inhale to center, towards the left. Inhale up, towards the right. One more each side. My legs are on fire. It hasn't even been that long. Gently come back to center. Oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? Did I think we have, no, right. One more breath. Gently start to release out of the pose. Oh, you can bring the right foot forward, mountain pose. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, palms on the mat. Start to step back into your down dog. From here, bring the right foot forward. Start to slowly lower that left knee down. If you need cushioning, you can place a towel, blanket, anything under there to kind of cushion it out. We are gonna find movement here. So then he poses splits or half splits. So we're here in a modified crescent. Sometimes we're upright, but we're gonna stay low because we're gonna move through a transition. So from our modified low lunge, we're gonna slowly bring the hips back and then you're gonna come into a half split here. Don't lock this knee, micro bend. Point your heel, toes point towards you. So you should feel the stretch right here in your hamstring. If not, bring the hips back more, point the heel a bit more, draw the toes closer towards your face. On your next inhale, we'll walk to our modified crescent. As you exhale, half split. Inhale, modified crescent. Exhale, half split. One more, modified crescent, half split. You can stay here. I'm gonna go ahead and get a block. Just to show a different modification for your splits. So, if this right here is enough for you, stay here. But remember, you do want to kind of find your edge without any pain. So challenge yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Now, again, you can stay here. Or if you'd like, you can start to bring the back toe up, but come onto the ball of the foot. Start to heel toe the front foot towards the front. Another modification for your splits. The block has many different levels. It has a high level, a medium level, and this is the low level. So that will help as well. Or if it's in your practice, you can go into your full split. You can go ahead and do that. If you like, you can fold. Three breaths here. On that fourth inhale, start to gently walk the hands towards you. Bring that right leg back. Start to transition into your down dog. Oh, good. Mm. Start to notice how that right leg feels compared to the left. One more breath here in our down dog. And then with the next inhale, bring the left foot forward. Start to find your modified lunge here. Try not to have the foot back 
and the knee like this. This will start to cut into those knee ligaments. So really draw the knee back and the foot forward. You can have books under your hands. It will bring the floor more closer to you, which will also make the pose more accessible. Try to even out the hips here. So you'll draw the left hip back, the right hip forward. When you're ready, start to find that half split. Draw those hips back, point to heel. Toes point towards you. Remember not to lock. On your next inhale, modified crescent. Exhale, half split. Inhale, the modified crescent. Exhale, half split. Inhale, modified crescent. Exhale, half split. You can hold here. You can start to find your full split. I don't know if it's gonna happen for me on this side. Oh, I think I'll do the block this time. Oh. And that's something you may notice in your body as well. One side may be easy, the other side may be like, nope, I'm not doing that. So just notice <clears throat> the imbalance in the body. We all have it, but we practice to find balance in our emotions, in our chakras, in our body, in our practice. Again, if you'd like, you can fold. On your next inhale, we'll gently start to come up. We're going to find a wide leg fold here. So come into a wide straddle position. Point those heels, lengthen in the torso. Inhale your arms up and then start to fold. Try to keep a lengthy back. So if you're starting to round, lower and lengthen. So you could be here. Make sure the heels are pointed, the legs are grounded, tailbone's grounded. You can go down to your forearms. If it's in your practice, you can go all the way down. We're just gonna breathe and extend for a few breaths here. Try not to draw your energy down and in. You wanna draw it up and out. Make sure the jaw's nice and soft, the tongue's resting in the space of your mouth for two more breaths. On your next inhale, you can start to walk towards the right foot. Really ground that left hip, that left sit bone. Heels are still nice and pointed. Next inhale, we'll come back to center. Exhale towards the left. Gently inhale back to center. With your exhale, start to walk your hands towards your body. Start to gently lift. From here, we'll bring the soles of our feet together for our bound angle again. This time we're gonna fold. Remember, less intense, the heels are further away. More intense, the heels are closer. Now, from here, I'm gonna go ahead and place my hands on my feet. I'm gonna open my feet out as if they're a book. So I'm stretching into my feet, into the arches of my feet as well. I wanna draw my thighs towards the mat. You can even flutter, flutter them if you'd like. Then when you're ready, start to lengthen in the spine with an inhale and an exhale and start to fold. 
So I draw my elbows on the sides of my calves just to get a deeper stretch. You don't need to do that. But then again, energetically feel the stretch and the hips and inner thighs. Two breaths. Next inhale, we'll gently come up. We'll go ahead and go through one internal rotation just to counter all the external rotations and flexions and extensions. So we're gonna take our left glute, our left heel towards our right glute. Our right heel towards our left glute. Coming into our cow face legs. If this is too much, you can place the sole of your foot down on the top leg. You can also sit on a bolster or blanket, which will or a blanket or block as well, or a book, a big thick book, to bring your pelvis up and to tilt it slightly forward, which again will help make the pose more accessible. Once you have this foundation, inhale your arms up and then start to fold. Remember, don't tuck the chin in. Keep some space in the front of the throat. One more breath. On your next inhale, gently start to come up. You can switch the legs on your own or you can go into a full circle, which will switch the legs for you. Once you have your foundation, start to inhale your arms up, exhale and fold. Space in the front of the neck. Really try to extend out of the hips as you ground the sit bones. Soft jaw, soft forehead. Maybe still continuing your visualization, the water, the color orange. On your next inhale, gently start to rise up. And that is our practice. As you know, I always suggest a good 10, 20 minute meditation. Again, you can use the YouTube channels, the binary, by Lirial, or sorry, the sacral chakra, binaural beats on YouTube, um, chants, even just meditating and just focusing on that lower part of the belly where the chakra is located. I appreciate you watching the video. Like and subscribe. Namaste.